I still find the concept of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible interesting as an engineering design challenge. As I've been studying it further, I came to the realization that there were indeed three members that connected the titanium interface rings together. At the very least, they were a place where the white exterior shell could be fastened to. Now, before we get started, I want to point out that in these videos I've created over the last few weeks, it's not my intention to bash Stockton Rush or Ocean Gate. I'm just seeking to understand more completely how it was made and what the possible weaknesses of the design were besides the most obvious one. It's not the easiest task considering there's only a handful of pictures and short video clips of it being made and in operation. So I've been learning as I go along. I believe I have finally figured out their system with respect to the legs and weight carriage. Okay, so let's start with this picture of it being built. This shows a fair amount of detail. Here you can see the members that connect the interface rings together. It's not clear to me if they were meant to be anything other than a place to fasten the shell to, but they look substantial enough that they may have been intended to be a structural element to add some rigidity to the framework system. There are three of them at 90 degree intervals. Note that there is no such member under the belly as can be seen here. There is a fitting that joins these members to the interface rings. It appears that this part was also used as a means to connect the legs to the interface rings. There were framing members that went under the belly that connected to each of the side rails. Its purpose was to hold the ballast. You can see some lead weights hanging from that in this picture. If I understand correctly how all of this worked, this ballast cage could be dropped from the sub by means of two hydraulically actuated pins. It appears that it was basically a rack that was made to hold several pieces of heavy steel pipe. In this view here, there are additional steel pipes hanging from this cage. It's not clear to me exactly how the legs were intended to be released. I assume that the pins holding the legs onto the interface rings were at the top somewhere. These were apparently pneumatically actuated, which in my mind does not provide sufficient strength to do the job, especially not after several dives when parts could be all crusted up. This leads me to believe that perhaps one of the legs did not detach when they were performing their emergency protocol to drop the legs. When dropping the legs, the skid frame assembly should in theory detach as one piece. Here are the legs on the sub for reference. There seems to be other things attached to it as well, but I'm not sure what they are. I'm not sure exactly what constitutes the legs. Is it this whole assembly with the beams that go underneath the belly and are connecting all the legs together with the brackets? Or is it just these pieces on the side that appear to be kind of slapped onto the legs? When I hear frame or the legs, I think of that as being this whole assembly. So I'm not quite sure what exactly they were referring to in, in the transcript. So what if one of those pins malfunctions and the legs don't all detach? Let's revisit the transcript. Multiple attempts needed when they were trying to jettison the frame. Dropping the weight carriage and or the legs was an actual emergency protocol. It's interesting to note that in the footage of the debris recovered, one of these legs was missing. Here is the titanium interface rings for reference. At the bottom of the weight carriage is what I call the skid. This is what the sub sat on when docked, and it could also hold some amount of ballast. In this test dive from 2018, you can also clearly see the members that connected the interface rings together. It looks like they still hadn't worked out all the details of the tail cone assembly yet at that point. We can see the final form of the tail cone here, minus the syntactic foam blocks. It appears that the interface rings were intended to be connected together from the very start via three tabs. It's shown in this picture shared by Stockton Rush at a lecture given at the Explorers Club in New York, New York on April 10th, 2017. There's at least one mystery that still remains. There is an apparatus of some sort under the belly at the hatch end that I have not been able to figure out the purpose of. Perhaps it had something to do with closing the hatch. It looks like there were two rollers on each side and a cable. Your guess is as good as mine. On the underside of the hatch, there was a big block attached to the hemisphere, which was supported by a purpose-built platform. So it appears that they were very careful to try and not stress the carbon fiber or the bond between the interface ring and the carbon fiber when opening and closing the hatch. It probably was also required to make the operation a lot easier. I wanted to put this information together to correct an erroneous assumption that I made in my previous videos. 
it does appear that they indeed had something that functioned equivalently as tie bolts between the interface rings. I wonder how all of these interconnected pieces interacted with each other on a dive, however, or if galvanic corrosion may have somehow played a part in the failure of the sub. I mean, was every part of the sub either carbon fiber or all of the metallic parts only titanium? I tend to think not. In this picture, that weight carriage looks pretty corroded. So while on the surface it would appear to be an innovative design, there's just a mountain of potential problems that could arise besides the obvious one, the mating of carbon fiber with titanium. I hope that you found this video interesting and informative and that you learned a little more about the details of how the OceanGate Titan submersible was constructed.